Here we are in the great southern region of Western Australia. We're in uh, Denmark at the moment. It's absolutely beautiful. Stick around to see what else we're up to. Ah yes, Parry Beach Campsite, balls deep in peppermint tree forest right now, but uh, if you are familiar with Parry Beach you would know about 100 metres that way is the ocean, so the typical great southern where the bush meets the water, it's absolutely beautiful down here. And check that out behind me. That's firewood and a fire pit. You're, through summer you can have a fire after 5 p.m. out here and they sell firewood up there at the uh, caretaker's office if they've got it in there which they mostly do. So that's pretty damn cool be able to be out here in the bush and have a fire going in the middle of summer. I am definitely okay with that. Well, that was quite the eventful night. Mate, oh, so I wasn't filming much anyway because I was quite knackered and we were just going to have a chilled night. So, before we came down, I knew there was a chance of a bit of rain. It looked like a bit of rain on the radar, which, you know, is pretty normal being down here. And we were expecting maybe, oh, I don't know, I think I was keeping an eye on it all week and it looked like it was only going to be about two mil max. So there was a bit of thunder, as we're cooking dinner, there's a bit of thunder. And then the rain started. And then it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. And we're right in the middle of cooking and eating dinner. And then it just, it just came in. And uh, it got chaotic. <laughs> so we ended up throwing everything in the car, making room under the awning here for the swag. Got the swag in under the awning. And, um, and then it just rained all night, so basically we just got into bed about 7.30 and we just rode the night out in the swag. Looked on the radar this morning, we ended up with 15.2 mil. <sighs> Sun's out this morning though, so we'll see how today goes. Getting them brows on fleek? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I like your mirror. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> So while Kelly makes herself look adorable, uh, I'm going to do a bit of packing up and we're going to head into Denmark and we'll um, do a bit of sightseeing on the way. There's a couple of spots to go check out on the coast. Currently at the moment, um, one of the main spots, Elephant Rock, is shut. 
the whole William Bay area is shut for um what are they doing? Are they doing the car park or something? That's the seal road. Seal road. Making it all commercial and not cool. So we can't get in there at the moment. But it's alright. So we'll check Denmark out. Do a couple of errands in there. And um, stop at a few spots on the way where we can. down to Lights Beach to have a look down there to see what that's all about. We are currently stuck behind a grader. Thanks Shire of Denmark. I'm thankful for the greater track but you're holding us up buddy. I mentioned last night how excited I was to have a fire going and um, I didn't really film any of it but not long after I did get it going the rain came in and we didn't get a chance to eat dinner around it and just enjoy the night around the fire because of the rain um, but man I'm so happy to have it going now this is awesome it's been a good few months since sitting around a fire and I am loving every bit of this. This is awesome. So stoked. Earlier we were down on Perry Beach having a wander. Um, and you will have seen that hut. Or if you haven't seen it, you'll be seeing a hut right now on screen. Um, so this little hut, not really sure when it was built. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. But this hut is it's a lookout hut for salmon for the salmon run um, every year it sort of kicks off around now uh, through Easterish um, the salmon run down south is a really big thing and so this hut was built for that um, I was talking to a few of the old boys at the caretakers house and that's what they're aware of they're confident that it's a it's a hut for scouting for when salmon season salmon run comes um and so getting back to when it may have been built the shop there the well the the house that they're in now was a general store and that was built around 56 57 they reckon so i imagine the huts may have been there prior to that some period of time i'm not too sure but it makes sense that the the huts and that that little um, lookout 
were probably there for a little bit before they would have gone and put a general store in. Um, it's only just, it makes sense to me. But And then further up, a private track. We weren't going to go in there because it's a private track and there's actually people there now waiting for salmon season. But there are still those huts from back then that are in there now still being used. So that was pretty cool as well. Bit of history on the place is always cool. It's a really cool little old a uh, little old house. Well, it was a shop back in its day, but very cool. Very cool to know. And they were, they were very happy to, they were excited to tell me. Because um, I was quite keen and asked quite a lot of questions about the area. And the whole area is really just built for, for the salmon run. That's the intention of the huts, that's what it still is now. Instead of that being a general store now, it's just a, it's just a, a caretaker's uh, house, I suppose. So, very cool. Valley of the trees, here we go. Um, we've just paid, it's $21 an adult. Uh, and it's pissing down. Well, it's, it's not, not pissing. It's not pissing down, but it is raining. But they lend you an umbrella when you pay. So we <laughs> grab one of them, try and keep this camera dry as much as I can. So, yes. Go for a wander. I'm not a fan of heights. I don't like heights one bit, to be honest. But I really want to see this walk. So, a few deep breaths, I'm going to suck it up, see how I go. I think you'll be alright, won't you? Yeah, yeah. Alright. It really is so cool to be able to be up so high with these big trees, man. You're only, only a matter of meters from the very tops of these massive trees. That is pretty cool. So with the walk done, there's also a 450 odd metre walk you can do down below. So I think we'll go and do that too, eh? Yeah, I think so. Check that out. Couldn't have picked better weather. I mean, as much as rain can be a pain sometimes, it's setting a beautiful mood here for being somewhere like this. So Loving it. Go check this walk out if I don't get stabbed by an umbrella. Be easy just to presume that they've just put this uh, the, the treetop walk and this particular walk through any random bit of bush that is good for it but they've actually put it in this specific area because there's a unique number of the tingle trees in this area so they've centered it around that obviously because uh, it's just a unique amount of tingle trees around so that's pretty cool. The treetop walk and this walk hasn't just been thrown in anywhere it can. It's been put in here specifically because of the unique amount of trees here, which is cool. It's 
So the tingle trees hollow out like this. Got that in the background there. They, ho they hollow out like this uh, because of fire. Fire is what does that. Um, and some of these trees are so big. Not this one here, but the other one. They're so big and they're so burnt out and hollow at the bottom that they're actually suspended. They've got wire attached to the top of them just to hold them up because they're so they're so big and so hollowed out. Um, and even in this state, the tree can still live. It's still alive. Um, but it's interesting because the tingle trees especially have a very small root system and they can actually be damaged quite easily. So they're quite a fascinating tree in the sense that they have a very small root system. Uh, they grow extremely big and they hollow out down the bottom from fire. So, and they rely on that fire too, they need that fire. So it's a very big part of life for a tingle tree. So they're quite a fascinating tree. We're in the Walpole Nornalup National Park now, or one part of it anyway, it's quite a big national park. And uh, you can see in the background there, I'll put another clip in to really show the beauty. So we're on this gravel track, just driving through, it reminds me a lot of the Boron Up Forest. It's got a very Boron Up Forest feel, lots of carry, lots of tingle trees. There's a, apparently there's a massive tingle tree in here that we're going to go check out. And uh, right now we're just sort of looking out up the track. So, yeah, really pretty. We've just done the lookout, now we're heading to go and look at a big tingle tree. I think it does a loop around some tingle trees and there's one massive tingle tree. So we've seen a lot of tingle trees today, we'll go and see what this one looks like. <laughs> Twenty-five meter girth at the bottom. Probably about twenty meter high. Uh, hollow in the middle from being burnt. Four hundred odd years old. And what if I told you it was still alive? The thing's still alive, still growing. It's crazy. So we notice a lot of tingle trees, well, basically all of them, they all have uh, an interesting big lumpy uh, burr sort of thing hanging off them. They'll be big ones, small ones, um, but they've always got them. And what it is, is it's, it's something attacking the tree, and it's the tree's way of reacting to it. So say mites or fungi or some sort of foreign object attacking it, and the tree the tree fights it and it creates this big burr which is essentially like what we would have on our arms it's a, it's a scab a big scar um, yeah pretty fascinating really the, the tingle tree seems to be the only tree that I've seen do it anyway but it's uh, to, to well to the degree that the tingle tree does it anyway it's pretty cool
pulled up to a spot now called Circular Pool. Um, have no idea what this place is. Not seen a picture. It says it's about a 550 odd metre walk. So, see what joy this brings us. Stay tuned. So there's a funny story about Circular Pool. Um, early, early 1960s, I think it was 62. Uh, the first ranger, official ranger appointed uh, in Western Australia it was, was here in this area. Um, his name was Lionel something, I can't remember his last name. Um, and a fire break around that same time a fire break had got put in it put in from oh, i suppose maybe southwest highway through to this spot which gave access to people to come down to this pool here uh, and the fire break basically drove cars straight down to the pool's edge along here so anyway after a couple of years of the pool being open that road being open for the fire break the car rolled so this ranger lyle or Lionel, he thought, well, we can't have that, so I'm going to go and put a car park in up the top. So then after that, they've put in a big, put in a big rock retainer wall to try and stop erosion and whatnot. And now that car park that's up there is the same car park that he put in back in 1964. That was so a bit of an interesting story. It took one guy to roll his car, and it changed everything. I bet those purists back in the day that were able to drive down to the water's edge were furious. How dare you stop us from parking down on the pool? We don't want no car park. <laughs> Just goes to show, doesn't it? Same mentality now. One person makes a ball up and it changes everything for everyone. Oh well. Bloody battery's going flat on the old cannon. This is a cannon power shot G7X. It's quite a nice camera. That's what my majority of filming is done on. But uh, while well, this is flat, it's filming on the GoPro for now. So that's what you've seen a little bit of footage so far on. The joys of filming flat batteries. I love to have a beer with Duck. I love to have a beer with Duck. We drink 